Sage 100 ERP has a return merchandise authorization module designed to enter, track, and process customer returns. Through a single processing point in Sage 100 ERP, you can record and track returns, establish return instructions, process replacement orders, cross ship items, and process returns to vendors, inventory, or to scrap. In this tutorial, we'll walk through the processing of a return and also show how easy it is to generate a replacement order. So now let's jump right in and get started. Let's suppose that one of our customers has reported that they received an item that was damaged in shipping and they've requested that a replacement be sent. So with that as our scenario, let's begin the RMA process by going to the menu tree and select Return Merchandise Authorization, Main, RMA Entry. We'll begin by clicking the number icon to assign the next RMA number. Note that the RMA date will default to the current system date. Next, we'll select the customer and using the lookup, we'll choose American Business Futures. Moving to RMA status, here you'll find three options. New is automatically assigned when an RMA is first created. Once the customer RMA is printed, the status automatically changes to Open, and Hold is manually selected, typically while approvals or credit checking is in process. We'll leave the status set to New. Note that additional statuses are automatically assigned as the RMA is received and processed through the system using Generate Transactions. However, we won't be demonstrating these additional statuses in this tutorial. Expire date is automatically calculated based on the entry you make in RMA options for the number of days before RMA expires. This can be changed as needed and will accept the default. In the Return Via field, we'll select the shipping method that our customer will be using to return the item. For our demo, we'll select U.S. Postal Service. Return To is set to our default return address which is 0000. If you have multiple warehouses, you can select the applicable location where the return is to be received. Let's open the lookup and change this to our Building B Dock 100 warehouse location. You can click the Return Address button to view the details of this return location. Moving on, note that the Customer Ship To, Confirm To, Comment, Email, and Fax Number fields default from Customer Maintenance. Now we'll select the actions to perform for this return. By selecting Inspect on Receipt, the system will print a message on the RMA Receiver document that directs the receiving dock to inspect the item being returned. Moving to Cross Ship, we'll select it to note that we'll be processing a replacement shipment prior to receiving the return. By enabling this, it will automatically fill in as the Customer Action for each of the items selected for return when we go to the Lines tab. Apply Restock Charges is automatically selected based on our inventory setup options. Print Customer RMA is selected in order to print an RMA document that can be emailed, faxed, or mailed to the customer. Typically, the Customer RMA document includes return shipment instructions. And finally, Print RMA Receiver is selected in order to print the receiving document. Now let's move to the Address tab. This displays the default Bill To and Ship To addresses from the customer record. Both may be changed as needed, but we'll assume that they're correct and move on to the Lines tab. Here we'll open the Invoice Number Lookup to select the invoice that includes the item being returned. For demo purposes, we'll assume that it's the first one on the list. Here in the RMA Item Selection window, you'll find that the lines from the invoice are automatically displayed. We can either click the green check to return all items on the invoice, or we can highlight a single item for return. For our demo, we'll select the first one on the list as the damaged item that our customer is returning. Once highlighted, we have several options to choose from. Starting with Customer Action, we have four choices. None if no action is required. Credit if a credit memo should be issued. Replacement if the product will be replaced. 
and repair if the product will be repaired and returned. We'll select Replacement. Moving to Item Action. Here we'll identify what should be done with the item when it's received, and we have four options. Stock, typically if the wrong part was shipped or the customer changed their mind. Scrap, if the item is not usable but must be accounted for. Repair, if we will send the item to repair either in-house or to a vendor, and none if no action is required. We'll select Repair. Next we have Vendor Action, and here we have three choices. Credit, if we will request a credit from the vendor to our account. Replacement, if the item will be replaced by the vendor, and None, if no action is required by our vendor. We'll select None since we won't be demonstrating vendor credits or product returns back to the vendor. Moving to Return Reason, let's open the lookup to view the list of return codes. Return codes are a setup option on the RMA setup menu, and they can be tailored to meet your company's specific needs. You may recall that our demo scenario involves the return of a damaged item, so we'll select Damaged. Cross-ship is automatically enabled based on the selections we made on the header and may be deselected if desired. Moving to Credit Freight. Select this if you're going to credit the shipping from the original invoice when a credit memo is created for the return. For our demo, we'll leave this unchecked and now we'll click OK. Notice that the line displays the invoice number, item code, and our selections for a return reason, customer action, and item action. The unit of measure, warehouse for the return, and unit price have also defaulted in. Now let's click in the return quantity field and enter a return quantity of 1. You may recall that earlier we selected Crossship to send a replacement item before receiving the return, so we need to create an order for the replacement. To do this, we'll click the Express Sales Order button. This will create the sales order for the replacement item based on the information we entered in the RMA. And we'll click Yes to save the changes to the RMA. Now the system opens the order that the Express Sales Order created for the replacement item. You should review the order to verify the information and process it as you would a normal sales order. We'll do a quick review of the header information and then the information on the Lines tab. We'll assume that all is correct and click Accept to save the order and we'll return to the RMA entry window. If we had more RMAs to enter, we could do so here. Now we're ready to print the customer RMA document, which we'll do by clicking the print icon. And for demo purposes, we'll choose Preview. And here's the customer's return authorization. Notice that the replacement item is listed below the return item. Let's close the window and click Yes to print the RMA receivers. And we'll again select Preview. The RMA receiver document is typically handed off to the receiving dock so that they'll expect the return shipment. Further, in our example, it includes instructions for how the return is to be processed by the warehouse staff. Specifically, in our example, the message Inspect on Receipt is printed on the form. Also, space is provided for manual notations next to Item Action, Return Warehouse, Lot Number, and Received Quantity. Let's close the RMA receiver and reopen RMA entry to review the status of our RMA. Here we'll navigate to our RMA by hitting the arrow. Notice that the RMA status is now open and the RMA will remain in the system until it has been received. And that completes our tutorial on the basics of RMA entry. Give us a call if you need assistance with this or any other feature in your Sage 100 ERP system. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Bye for now.